first off, welcome to New York. Thank you. Uh, first question, why Scotia, and more specifically, why McKeel Christian Academy for your rally? Well, we are, the, the strength of our campaign is the grassroots, and so we are traveling the state, we are, we are building our support, and I'll tell you, the energy we're seeing from the grassroots is, is very encouraging. Uh, you know, people in New York are hurting. Uh, working men and women in this country are hurting after seven years of the Obama-Clinton economy. The rich and powerful, those with influence in government, influence in the Obama administration, they've gotten fat and happy. But working men and women have seen jobs dry up, have seen wages stagnate. Young people are scared. They're, they're coming out of school. They don't have jobs. They don't have opportunity. My focus, my number one priority as president, will be jobs and economic opportunity, bringing jobs back to America. As president, we will repeal every word of Obamacare. We'll pass a simple flat tax and abolish the IRS. We'll pull back the federal regulators that are killing small businesses. We'll stop amnesty and end sanctuary cities. And Is the effect of all of that, we're going to see millions of high-paying jobs coming back to America, jobs coming back from Mexico, back from China. We're going to see wages rising again. And we're going to see young people coming out of school once again with hopes and dreams and optimism and job offers and a future. That's what this election's about. You're coming off a big win in yeah. Wisconsin. Yeah. How do you plan to close the delicate count, yeah. though, that still exists between you and, and Donald Trump? Well, our win in Wisconsin this week was a tremendous victory. You know, three weeks ago, we were down 10 points in Wisconsin, and all the media analysts were saying Wisconsin was a perfect state for Donald Trump. It was an, uh, an upper Midwest state, an industrial state, heavily blue collar, not a very high percentage of evangelicals in Wisconsin. They said it was tailor-made for Trump, and yet what we saw was this incredible surge. where We went from 10 points down to winning by 13 points. And what was so encouraging is we won across every demographic group. We won women. We won men. We won young people. We won people of every income level. We won working men and women. That support, we won independence. We saw that all across. And you know, one of the things that's encouraging for New York is an awful lot of the demographics of Wisconsin have a lot in common with upstate New York, with the working men and women who've been hammered year after year after year and are looking for a president who will stand with them instead of the corrupt special interest in Washington. Still, New York is a blue state. Yeah. You've positioned yourself yeah. extremely conservative in this election. How do you plan to appeal to voters here and also to unite what's become sort of a fractured Republican Party? Well, I'll tell you, we are seeing unity every day. We're seeing Republicans coming together behind our campaign. There are some 65 to 70 percent of Republicans nationwide recognize that Donald Trump is not the best candidate to go head to head with Hillary Clinton. That if we nominate Donald, Hillary wins. And she wins by double digits. I mean, it is a landslide. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing those Republicans uniting and coming together behind our campaign. You know, in Wisconsin, we won very conservative voters, but we also won somewhat conservative voters. The only group Donald won was self-described moderates and liberals. That was the only group in Wisconsin he could win. And the reason simple, Donald has supported liberal democratic policies and liberal democratic politicians for 40 years. Donald has been supporting financially Governor Cuomo and supporting Hillary Clinton and supporting Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid. And Republicans want a leader who they can trust. And you know, you talked about unity. If you think about it, a year ago we had 17 Republican candidates in the field, an amazingly diverse, talented field. Now the field is narrowed. And of those 17, five are supporting our campaign. We've been endorsed by Rick Perry, by Lindsey Graham, by Jeb Bush, by Scott Walker, by Carly Fiorina. And when you add into that mix Senator Mike Lee and Mark Levin, that is the full spectrum of the Republican Party. It is the unity we're seeing. And that's our focus, uniting the party, standing together to win the nomination, and to win the general and beat Hillary Clinton in November. Since you're now in New York, I yeah. wanted to bring up uh, a comment that you made, I believe, during the South Carolina mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. debate uh, calling out yeah. Donald Trump for his, quote, New York values. Mm -hmm. A lot of New Yorkers were offended mm -hmm. by that comment. Do you want to qualify it or clarify what you meant? You know, as I've traveled New York, people, people have told me they knew exactly what I meant. They know exactly what are meant by the values of liberal Democratic politicians who have been hammering the state. You know, the people of New York have paid the price. They know what a failure liberal Democratic values are. You know, for example, people in Western New York where you've got the Marcellus Shale, incredible natural resources, 
just south, just in Pennsylvania, they're developing those resources. They're seeing an economic boom. People are prospering in Pennsylvania. And yet in New York, because the liberal Democratic politicians will not allow fracking, New Yorkers don't get jobs. Their wages don't get up, go up. Their property values don't go up. That is, those are the New York values that people are so frustrated with, the liberal Democratic values. I'll give you another example. Mayor Bill de Blasio. One of the first things he did after he got elected mayor of New York City is he tried to shut down the charter schools in Harlem because he's so in hock to the union bosses of the teachers unions that he was willing to throw out of their schools young African-American kids, young Hispanic kids, to tell them, you don't get hope, you don't get a future, you're going to be trapped. Those are the values, and you know, they were never more on display than when the brave men and women of the NYPD stood up and turned their back on Mayor de Blasio because over and over again, liberal Democrats in this state have sided with criminals and looters rather than with the brave men and women, the cops and firefighters and first responders. And I would note, virtually every one of these liberal Democrats has been supported by, for decades by Donald Trump. If you don't like the policies being foisted on you by liberal Democratic politicians, then it doesn't make sense to support someone who's been funding their efforts decade after decade. Senator, we're running out of time. I wanted yeah. to make sure I asked you about the governor here in New York mm -hmm. banning non-essential travel to places like Mississippi and North Carolina mm -hmm. in light of these religious liberty mm -hmm. laws. Being a conservative candidate, somebody mm -hmm. who I know identifies with these laws, how are you going to position yourself, especially when some of these states are losing business, PayPal pulling out a million dollar deal hundreds of jobs potentially now slashed because of that. You know, the, the radical extremism of the Democratic Party is, is really sad. It wasn't too long ago that religious liberty brought us together. It was a bipartisan issue. The Democrats and Republicans, we might disagree over marginal tax rates. But when it came to religious liberty, everyone came together. Everyone was united. You know, you look at a couple of decades ago, the Federal Religious Freedom Restoration Act passed the United States Senate virtually unanimously, was signed into law by a Democrat, Bill Clinton. Now you fast forward a couple of decades, st states are passing laws very, very similar to that federal law, except the modern Democratic Party has decided there is no room for religious liberty. They are so extreme and so radical. I think we need a federal government that protects our rights. The very first liberty protected in the First Amendment of the Bill of Rights is religious liberty. It's the religious liberty of Catholic schools, of Jewish day schools, of Brigham Young. It's the religious liberty of the Little Sisters of the Poor. And it is heartbreaking to see that Democrats are so willing to persecute religious liberty that Andrew Cuomo views religious liberty with such disdain. You know, yesterday in the Bronx, I sat down in a meeting with a number of pastors, primarily Hispanic and African-American pastors. It was hosted by a Democratic state senator, Senator Ruben Diaz, who's a Democrat. And he talked about it. He actually brought up the governor. And he said, you know, the governor, he's a Democrat. And yet he said, conservatives have no place in New York State. Governor Cuomo said, if you're pro-life, if you believe in traditional marriage, if you believe in the Second Amendment, you have no place in New York. And I have to tell you, those pastors in the Bronx, those Hispanic pastors, those African-American pastors, were incensed that a liberal Democratic governor would say, if you don't embrace his left-wing values, he wants you out of the state. That's the kind of intolerance that has no place in politics. What about the intolerance the people in the LGBT community are experiencing from politicians such as yourself? Well, I appreciate that you want to claim intolerance. Listen, everyone has a right to live according to their life. But you don't have a right to force others to, to, to knuckle in and embrace your lifestyle. You take something like, like marriage. I'm a constitutionalist. I've spent my entire life defending the Constitution. Under the Constitution, marriage is a question for the states. If you want to change the marriage laws of your state, the way to do so is you convince your fellow citizens we should change the marriage laws. It is not the role of five unelected judges in Washington to tear down the laws adopted by the American people. I believe in democracy. And, and that is the essence of tolerance. People have the right to live according to their wills, but they don't have the right to get five liberal justices saying, we don't care what the people want, we're going to force this on you. That's the approach of liberal Democrats. It was the approach of Mayor Bill de Blasio when he was throwing young African-American kids out of their charter schools. It's the intolerance that I think we need to get beyond what our campaign is focusing on 
is uniting people behind shared values. Everyone in America wants to see jobs, wants to see wages rising, wants to see the Bill of Rights protected, and that's my focus as president. Okay, Senator, I know you have a rally to get to. Just quick preview, what are you going to bullet point for us today? Uh, my top three priorities as president are jobs, freedom, and security. Expanding jobs, bringing them back to America, raising wages, expanding opportunity for young people, protecting the Bill of Rights in the Constitution. And the Bill of Rights protects everyone. It protects, when it comes to religious liberty, religious liberty protects Christians, it protects Jews, it protects Muslims, it protects atheists. We all have the right to live according to our faith, to live according to our conscience. And then security. You know, we've seen for seven years a president who abandons our friends and allies, who is the most antagonistic administration to Israel we have ever seen as president. I will stand unapologetically with Israel and will stand up to radical Islamic terrorism, defeat our enemies, and keep America safe. We need a commander-in-chief focused on keeping America safe. That's my focus. And, and let me note, those three issues, jobs, freedom, and security, not a one of them is a narrow 51% wedge issue. Every one of those are broad, unifying issues. They bring together 60, 70, 80% of Americans. They're shared values. They're how we turn our country around. Well, thank you so much for sitting down with us again, Senator Cruz, and welcome to New York.